Hi, everybody. So I'm happy to welcome you to my speech. So I talk about air quality. Um, but that's what I will present. Who and what is Decent Lab? Then talk about our first project, CarboSense. Then I talk about the ambient outdoor air quality. And the second part, the indoor air quality and what we have done here during the Things Conference as a showcase. So, Decent Lab started really already more than 10 years ago, uh, monitoring um, ecophysiology measurement. That was our very first deployment, 2009. Our focus when we founded the company was always low power battery operated devices which are wirelessly connected to the internet. So, who is Decent Lab? We have uh, our, uh, we are a team of four. It's like me, Jonas, and another Jonas, and uh, Kash, uh, who are uh, the core of Decent Lab, and so the work is done by us. But we are working with a lot of partners in many countries today. Decent Lab, after, over these 10 years, did develop a lot of wireless sensors in a lot of environmental monitoring applications. So by now, we have about 25 to 30 products they're all LoRaWAN based, and we are proud of to be in really many applications now over the 10 years. So we have a long track history. <clears throat> With LoRa, our company also changed a lot. We have um, suddenly been around now in almost 40 countries. We are connected <clears throat> to about 20 LoRaWAN networks. We are working with a lot of operators, and it's, it's just fantastic to, to, to be in that time with LoRa and the IoT and the ecosystem. So I start off now with not air quality, it's more about greenhouse gas monitoring, but my point will be also be applicable to the air quality, but it's uh, something where I can show very well what to do. So in short, in 2017, we deployed 300 uh, low-cost CO2 devices over whole Switzerland. And by now, this is the largest CO2 network in the world of a whole country, measuring with low-cost and battery-operated CO2 sensors. The sensors are intended for the indoor, but we put it in the outdoors. Uh, it's tough. We have to post-process. <clears throat> it's a common initiative with the members you see below with the logos. Um, we have now that more than a year in the field, and that's how it looks by today, how it is distributed and pushed out. Um, so we have mounted that to weather station, reference weather stations. We have mounted them to street lightning. We have to mount to other buildings and so on. That's some examples of this. Uh, 300 devices we deployed. Um, on this slide, you now see here in the first, these are the measurements of about 50 sensors in July uh, 2017 when they have been rolled out. So you see they're all well aligned, they're in a co location, quite close. Like a year later, when you look at the raw readings for the same location, you have a totally different picture. So the sensors, they drift away, all of them. In, some go up, some go down. <clears throat> and this has a lot of reasons. One is um, the impact of aging uh, of, of the sensor, reorganizing uh, in the physical structure. And um, that's uh, really the, the hardest bit. So this is raw values. And you can see, you cannot just deploy sensors and, and use the data. So, <clears throat> sensors are not accurate for long-term measurements, and we need frequent recalibration to run that, but we cannot manage 300 sensors, go around the whole country. Switzerland is a small country. Think of bigger countries, so it's not feasible. So we have to do in-field calibration. We have to pro um, produce and develop models of the sensors, how they age over time. Um, a lot of strategies in the post-processing. <clears throat> so and now I'm, talk, I'm showing that, but it's not our work we do. 
the post-processing. This is our, our partners, EMPA in Dübendorf, the air pollution lab. So, <clears throat> um, infield calibration means we are comparing to reference sites, and then we have stable weather conditions or wind blowing. We can assume that the CO2 concentration in the field, the low-cost sensor, is the same CO2 concentration as next to the reference. So there's a lot of algorithms developed that we can measure the CO2 fluxes um, in ambient and in urban areas. Um, a lot of data treatment has, be done, has to be done. On the left, um, you see the raw data with a lot of outliers. So the data, this is normal. This is how it is always. So we have to do automatic data cleaning and probabilities of the measurements. <coughs> This will go on, and we will learn a lot in modeling sensors and to infield calibrations. Now I come to the next, <coughs> or to ambient air quality. So we are measuring NO2, and I know, and this is a very attractive to do that with low-cost sensors, but can this low-cost sensor be used for mapping air pollutants, especially in cities? So we developed together with EMPA, uh, our device is called AirCube. It is based on AlphaSense, uh, electrochemical gas sensors. It has temperature and humidity measurements in the inflow to make post-processing and compensation. It has a Teflon inlet to, <coughs> to not react with the NO2. Um, and so here we have another picture how we made these devices. It is battery operated, even it's active ventilated. Our first generation was GSM. The new ones are now all with LoRa. <coughs> and here you can see as well what has to be done on the very left. This is what you get from our air cubes from Decent Lab, the raw signal, so it's or from the Alpha Sense sensors. So Ideally, so it's a scatter plot showing uh, the reference data of the reference instruments from the official air pollution station, uh, in, uh, showing it uh, to our ions to, to our uh, devices. So ideally, they should be on the diagonal uh, part. And you can clearly see the raw signal is totally useless. So you have to apply models and post-processing and you can see <coughs> different algorithms tried uh, to align that. That's the middle plot. And uh, there's uh, another algorithm used uh, on, the, on the CERC graph. And you can see that, we, that you can highly improve that. So this is all training data. So we have, that was always next to, to a reference. That is the best you can get out of it. So, but then you do take away the, this air cube from the reference and bring it in the field. And so we did not bring it in the field in a remote place, we just brought it from one reference to the offer reference to again compare what would happen if it would be in the field. So we see after a time, <clears throat> it opens up again and this helps you to quantify how accurate you can measure and be used for reporting. So here you see the set of what I just explained. So we calibrated, or EMPA did calibrate uh, the devices on the reference sites. Then they took it from the reference site into the city and rural price places, but again, also next to reference site to cross compare how it would behave. <coughs> so you can now see this is a deployment in the field. Uh, you have rural places and you have urban places. And you can see the gradient, and that's what you want to see. What is the background pollution, and where it, in the hotspots, how high is the elevation? And you can clearly see, with a lot of effort, you can do that, and you can also scale that over a whole city. And, but it's not just out of the box. It's really neat to have partnering the device people, like we in Decent Lab though, but we have to also partner with the air pollution uh, people, and that's where we address um, our collaborations. We always want to work with air pollution 
people and research going to the cities and not go totally alone and also not close the post-processing as a black box because then we cannot make trust. We only, it's only trustable when you know and are transparent what you are applying to the data. Here you see another plot of the NO2. <clears throat> and we worked on that for five years and it's still not there where we want to have it. It is uh, iterative uh, work to more and more understand and model sensors aging over time and, and compensate of the atmospheric changes. So, <clears throat> air sensors need the individual cal calibration, as I said, co-location to references. Also, you can use it in the calibration chamber. And model parameters are really to be chosen carefully. And uh, there is a lot of potential to, to, to work co in a collaboration with a lot of people bringing in new ideas to cross compare the different algorithms, take always out the, the best things. And that's how we want to tackle that low cost air quality monitoring is useful for cities, for reporting, for authorities. So we are now deploying it to more cities in the Europe, and it's a, a long or oh, a certain way to go. Um, we, have, we have some publications, or we, it's our partners, they published that, and they are very open what, what, what is feasible, what is not. So I recommend to also look up the publications which are made uh, based on our devices. Now we come to the indoor air quality. As you have seen, the Swiss CO2 live project was using indoor sensors for an outdoor application, which is visionary and is, uh, was very new. <laughs> and then I uh, said, OK, we take that and make an indoor air quality device. So we launched by end of the year our indoor ambience monitor. It consists of all of the relevant sensors which are needed for indoor ambience, so it's CO2, VOC, temperature, humidity, activity, barometric pressure, and illuminance. So everything you need for building automation and a lot of use cases indoors. It's battery operated by simple 2AA batteries, it's LoRaWAN device. Um, so for indoor air quality, the most relevant parameters are VOCs and CO2. So VOC is volatile organic components. This is odors or is a components which comes off from paintings and they can decrease your efficiency, your well-being, you don't feel well. So it's important VOC to measure or have to reduce the negative impacts for well-being. CO2 is not harmful, but CO2 high elevation, uh, I hope it's not too high that you do not fall asleep or feel not that, uh, or feel a little bit uh, lazy. So this drops as well the well-being, and we monitor that as well. Sometimes you want to do VOC and CO2, which is uh, in parallel the same, but that's not really true, or uh, make that. So we deployed on Wednesday about 20 of our devices in every room of the Things Conference. Here are some pictures. You see here four of our indoor ambience monitors, then one on the wall here in one column, there the column, and then the next. And so for us, it was a perfect showcase to show what we can do and what you get. So when you came into the entrance, you have seen our dashboard visualizations of live data. So here you see um, the data which was recorded yesterday in the Laura Wan Theater on the, on the main stage. You see there is an elevation of CO2, hopefully not too high. Uh, we have VOCs and also the activity. You can clearly see when the, the conference started, when people left. And this helps you for, for all your ca use cases we are targeting. The same for uh, the sink stage here. Here the CO2 elevation was a little bit higher, as far as I knew. We have uh, as well um, 
the activity, you can clearly see when people walked off and when it's gone down. And temperature humidity is always important to, to, to feel well in your, in your office or in the shop. Everybody of you can uh, visit our live data presentation. It's on exhibition.decentlab.com. Um, or it's then presented at our dashboards at the entrance. It's uh, interesting to see what is going on <laughs> over the whole uh, conference, and we are happy uh, that we could show really how it is used in real life now at the conference here. The indoor ambience monitor was, is also important, like not just only connecting sensors, but we also did send in that to Air Paris. This is the, the, the official institution which is relevant for air pollution monitoring in France, uh, especially in Paris. And this is an um, independent institution which did measure about 40 different devices, uh, cross-compared them, so they are independent. They, and we have been awarded with our device uh, for the indoor climate. So, we have seen this dashboard, which is based on open source uh, core technologies, but uh, there are many IoT platforms there where we think this device should be used in combination with other devices, where it makes even more use of it. So integration we have with IoT in the box, as you can see from my devices. We are working with HiveMind, our Swiss colleagues, and we are with many other platforms to, to, to give even more added value to, to, to have use cases and for, for all. Okay, so that was a, a very short summary about air quality, the limitations of currently hardware sensing. Um, the presented slides were also, uh, I have, have to say ma many thank you to EMPA, the air pollution lab, which did the presentation of the slides, the relevance and the evaluation of uh, the sensing and uh, all of our partners. So thank you for listening to my presentation. Thank you.